Skin cancers are the most commonly diagnosed group of cancers worldwide. According to the World Health Organization, the incidence of both non-melanoma and melanoma skin cancers has been increasing over the past decades. It is estimated that a 10% decrease in ozone le levels will result in an additional 300,000 non-melanoma and 4,500 melanoma skin cancer cases globally. Good evening. My name is Masa Chaba Kobola and welcome to this edition of Soweto Today. Tonight, we speak on skin cancer and seek to raise awareness on its prevalence, symptoms and treatment. Joining us via Zoom is Dr. Claudia Molwabi, who is a dermatologist. She joins us to educate us more about skin cancer. Dr. Claudia, good evening. Welcome to Soweto Today and thank you for joining us. Good evening, Masa Chaba, and thank you for... For, for, for inviting me. Now let's start with a clear but simple explanation on what skin cancer actually is and how many different types there are. Uh, uh, skin cancer uh, occurs when there is the DNA of the skin cells and there is, there is an error in the DNA of the skin cancers. So, and that error is being unable to be repaired. And um, almost everybody can get the skin cancer. And, um, and what, are, what are some of the signs and symptoms of different types of skin cancer? Um, at times it's just um, a skin, what we call a mole. You can just get a mole that increases in size and uh, changes in color. At times it can just be that the scaliness uh, a lesion that is just scaly and uh, not painful at all. Uh, some of them, they can be uh, infected and more often than not, it will make the patient not to, not really worry about that very uh, skin lesion that they have. Now, do these signs and symptoms actually present themselves differently on darker skin and if so, how? Hello. Did you hear me, ma'am? So the question was, um, do these signs and symptoms present themselves differently on darker skin? And if so, how? In darker skin, uh, at times they can just, depending on what type of skin cancer is it. Because as you know that we have the melanoma and then we have the non-melanoma uh, skin cancers. but on top of the melanomas, we have what you call a melanotic melanoma, which means that it will not be black. It will just be the skin colored uh, papule, we'll call it. It's just a small, uh, like a pimple or a bump on the skin. And then one will not even think that this is a skin cancer or melanoma. And in terms of the non-melanoma skin cancers, there's, there's a lot of them. We have the commonly the basal cell carcinoma and the squamous cell carcinomas and then we have muckle cell carcinoma we have the sebaceous lens carcinoma the Kaposi sarcomas uh, the um, mycosis fungoides um, which is like a type of lymphoma but there's so many uh, there are so many skin cancers out there now, for someone who doesn't know what melanoma and melanoma skin cancers are, can you just delve into that? Um, melanoma, uh, if we have to explain to a lay person, is just uh, abnormal growth of black cells. They, 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 they usually melanoma will be black. Then uh, it will just be a mole maybe at birth or just the sudden appearance of a mole and then it will change in color, it will change in consistency, and then um, some patients will feel like they become more aware that I've been having this thing, but I've not been feeling it, but suddenly I can feel that there is something out there. Uh, but more often than not, it's not really painful. So that's why uh, patients leave it until it has already uh, metastasized, like it has gone into other areas of the body. Now let's talk about who is most at risk of developing skin cancer and what risk factors do we need to be aware of? For instance, can genetics play a role in whether you are at high risk or not? 
Very much so. Genetics is actually the foremost important thing because um, most of the time uh, we get here yeah, patients saying um, the black people are not at risk of uh, getting the skin cancers. But that is a myth because if you have genetic predisposition to develop skin cancer, you will, whether black or white. But we know that uh, lighter skin colored are more at risk and then even the, the the recreation plays a very important role like when you have outdoor recreation and indoor occupation when you are most of the time uh, in exposed to the sun especially between 10 a.m and 4 p.m and then uh, even the use of uh, tanning beds and the light beds and then uh, in terms of occupation, where you work, like some of the people working in the industries where they use the arsenic, which is a chemical, they get more at risk of getting skin cancers. So um, it depends on what you do when uh, even the skin care routine, like uh, most of the patients think that you don't have to wear a sunscreen when it's uh, rainy or when it's cloudy and those those are the kind of things that we, we just need to educate patients on well um, I'm gonna ask that we park the conversation here for now but when we come back we actually continue the conversation of skin care um, skin cancer awareness don't go anywhere Welcome back, you're still watching Soweto today. Now, before the break, we got a better understanding of what the different types of skin cancer are with Dr. Claudia Mulwabi, a dermatologist who still joins us via Zoom. Now, Dr. Claudia, there is this idea that skin cancer is in one of the more serious cancers. Is this true or not, and why? Uh, it depends on what type of skin cancer it is, because the basal cell carcinoma is not that... Uh, dangerous it's only that it can get a uh, bigger and then it can get infected but in terms of the squamous cell carcinoma which is a non-melanotic skin cancer it can get aggressive and it can also spread to other parts of the body and so is the Merkel cell carcinoma and the Kaposi sarcoma and the mycosis fungoides and all the other skin cancers. And then in terms of melanoma is the very aggressive form of uh, skin cancer. That one, it is uh, dangerous because it can affect, it can uh, metastasize, like spread to other parts of the body and patients can virtually actually die from the melanoma. I want us to look at a myth that uh, black people aren't really at risk of getting skin cancer. Now, can you please talk us through this, um, why this is or isn't true? It is not true because um, genetics plays a role, like we said, and then uh, black people can get skin cancers, like if we're talking about the melanoma, uh, because where you have the melanocytes, which are the type of skin uh, skin cells which uh, gives us our color color it contains what we call melanin we can still get um, melanoma and then we can get the melanoma on the for black people it is common on the on the feet and on the soles it's so like the, it can affect the lower extremities of the body but it can appear anywhere now, the idea that using sunscreen daily and having a good lifestyle and diet will prevent you from getting skin cancer, is it true or not? Uh, at least it will minimize the risk, but it does not mean that if you wear a sunscreen and you have to go outside and say you are protected. Mm. There is a proper way of using the sunscreen and then even at the intervals and they even the volume like how much of the sunscreen to use so there is this um like do you believe that there is enough awareness in our communities and if so how effective are these absolutely not they are not really there's not really awareness and i feel that as dermatologists we are failing the world 
because we're not talking much about skin cancers or rather the skin diseases under general so that uh, people can just uh, be aware that uh, this is actually a dermatological condition. Now, while more research needs to be done, um, studies suggest that some tattoo ink could contain cancer causing chemicals, a cancer causing chemicals. How true is this? It is very true. And even the, like I said previously, the arsenic, because you do not know what you put on the, on the, on your skin. Um, can, can you please continue, ma'am? It is absolutely a, a thing. It's not really, uh, it's up to, absolutely right because uh, like I said before, the arsenic and then even those uh, chemicals in the ink, we do not know what is contained in that, mm. uh, those very inks. So anything, even the drugs, the antibiotics that are making the skin to be uh, sensitive to the sun, they can pose the risk of you developing skin cancer. Let's pack it here for now. So it uh, today returns on the other side of this break to stay with us. Welcome back to Soweto Today. Thank you for choosing to stay with us. We're getting close to the end of the show, but we still continue the conversation on skin cancer awareness. Still joining us via Zoom is dermatologist Dr. Claudia Mulwabi to continue the conversation. Dr. Claudia, thank you for staying with us. Okay, thank you so much, Ms. Chama. Now, when, what does skin cancer um, screening and treatment involve? And once you've um, treated skin cancer, what is the likelihood of getting it again? Um, the um, uh, uh, consultation, uh, it involves like the clinical, like when a patient comes in, we have to undress the patient as a whole. And then uh, we use our eyes and then there are also devices that we use, the dermoscopy. Uh, so we check each and every lesion, uh, what it has and what, because there are certain characteristics that we can um, tell that this is a skin cancer when we're using those devices. And, and when we have confirmed that on the dermoscopy that this looks like a skin cancer, we start with our eyes, dermoscopy, and then we go on to the biopsy, meaning that we take a piece of skin, which is the, the, it's, it's a special way of taking um, a skin cancer for examination uh, that we take to the lab for them to uh, to assess whether this is a skin cancer or even the early type of uh, a skin cancer. So those are the ways that we, we diagnose the skin cancer. Now, um, what preventative measures should people take against getting skin cancer and should we generally, um, when should we generally start? As very early, from the age of six months, but uh, they like kids should if in the babies you do not need to expose their babies to the sun mm. but mainly you have to avoid the sun uh, between 10 a.m and 4 p.m and you always have to wear a sunscreen with a spf of 30 or more and then uh, to avoid the tanning beds and the lights and to be aware of sun sensitizing uh, medications and even over-the-counter medications, there are some that makes your skin to be overly sensitive to the sun. Even if they are meant to treat diseases like hypertension or even the headaches, they make your skin to be overly sensitive. And then the other thing is to regularly check your skin on your own to be aware of what is it that I suddenly see on, on my skin. And then the next uh, step is to visit a dermatologist at least minimum once a year, um, it, ideally twice a year, so that we can check whether there is anything that you might not have missed as a patient. So those are then, then even the sun uh, protective uh, um, uh, um, ways. When you wear a sunscreen, there is a volume of the sunscreen that you have to use, mm -hmm. uh, at least half a teaspoonful for your face. And then you try not to expose your body to the, to the sun. Mm -hmm. So even the, the arms, the, the sun exposed areas, they also need to be 
uh, protected with a sunscreen. And then when you are exposed to the sun or whether you are in an event where you are um, in, in the sun exposed area, every two hours you have to reapply your skin. And then the measures of putting the sunscreen like 15 minutes to 20 minutes before you go outside, you have to apply the sunscreen. And then uh, you have to reapply and even when swimming, after two hours, you have to go out and reapply the sunscreen. Mm -hmm. Now, speaking about um, sunscreens, what should we uh, what should we be looking for on our labels? And is there a real difference between sunscreens, um, sunscreen creams, and sunscreen sprays? I'm asking this because I've noticed that when we go shopping, we realize that some screens are SP30 and others are SP50, SPF50. Um, can you just um, assist us with that? Yeah, the, the, the sprays, they are better uh, when you are going to be uh, doing a sport, a water sport, like swimming, because at least they will go into the skin more. And even the kids, it's better because you just uh, spray all over the, the body. Mm -hmm. And then the, the sun protection factor is the minimum, is the, the amount of the the time that you get exposed to the sun that you will be protected so the thing is with the sun protection factor with the spf the sunscreen you have to use a broad spectrum sunscreen and then the sunscreen that you use it must be dermatologically tested and approved mm -hmm. and then it must be protecting you against the uvb and the uva and then uh off late, we also become aware that even the the uh, the these microwaves they have uh, radiation that you get, uh, and then you get uh, uh, exposed to the the radiation. You can get uh, sun uh, skin cancer, and also the um, the heads that we wear when we go to the salon, those lights that you put on the head, uh, the lamps, any lamps that emit radiation we can expose you to skin cancer. Now we're almost at the end. Um, what other key information do we need to know when it comes to skin cancer? The most important thing is that uh, skin cancer can affect anybody from any age and any skin color. So it, uh, we always have to be vigilant about uh, having to visit the dermatologist for skin care especially uh, once a year for the general body skin uh, assessment. And whenever you see something that is unusual on your skin, it is important to visit the dermatologist so that we can be assured that this does not mean that your skin, you have a skin cancer. Now we can't run away from the fact that not everyone can afford dermatologists or buying sunscreen to start with. Where can people go to find out more information and to get the necessary help should they need it? And what about them, those that can't afford? Um, what are some ways um, that they can protect themselves from the sun? Um, you still need a sunscreen, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. uh, the other thing that you can do is the protective clothing then to wear uh, the clothes that are long sleeves and then protect yourself not to get exposed to the day. And then even the wide brim head, uh, but it does not mean that you won't get uh, exposed, a, a radiation exposure when you're wearing a wide brim head. And then there are also government facilities. If you can cannot afford a dermatologist, there are dermatologists in the government facilities, and then they can also help with that. Well, that's where we wrap it up. But thank you so much, Dr. Claudia, for availing yourself for us. You're most welcome. Thank you so much for inviting me. I really hope that the people watching um, find all the answers that they need from watching the show. That was dermatologist Dr. Claudia Moloabi who has been speaking to us about skin cancer and the ways in which we can go about attempting to prevent it as well as how to treat it should we find ourselves having been diagnosed. That's how we wrap up today's episode of Soweto Today. Remember, we love hearing from you, so please feel free to talk to us about the episode by simply sending us an email on Soweto Today at Soweto TV.co.za. Alternatively, 
you can call WhatsApp us on 081-531-8857. From myself, Masa Chaba Kobola, it is a goodbye for now. Stay with us for your latest news update coming up next.